This is a recapitulation of our first series of presentations on harmony. The main concepts introduced included root position triads of major and minor scales, also four-part writing, rules, and practice. Of the seven scale triads in major, six are independent chords. One is dependent. Consonance makes for independence, calm. Dissonance makes for dependence, needing consonance for resolution. Listen. The primary triads of C major, the tonic, subdominant, and dominant, are all independent chords. All are transposable to any major key. The Roman numerals below, 1, 4, and 5, designate the scale degree of the fundamental or root of each triad. In four-part writing of root position triads, doubling of the root is the preferred option. Doubled fifths or thirds are permitted, however, and may even be mandatory. As shown on this slide, we learned how to reduce the four voice parts to a grand staff and about writing in score form with each voice and instrument on its own staff. Four to one, five to one. To write a singer-friendly progression, we retain the common chord tone in one voice through both chords and move the remaining upper voices to the nearest tones of the second chord. The principle of independence precludes our writing parallel unisons, fifths, octaves, or twelfths between any pair of voices. Moving between four and five, subdominant and dominant, in either direction requires contrary motion between upper voices and the bass. We talked about the supremacy of melody in music, mentioning in passing that spoken word is not melody, about the various kinds of motion between voices, their ranges, and what to avoid. We learned that Roman numerals are used to indicate the scale degrees of triad roots, and that in the opening chord of an exercise, an Arabic figure may be used to designate the interval from bass to soprano. The distinction between close and open position chords was discussed. as well as where to obtain some useful music theory manuals from the 19th century, now in the public domain and therefore free of charge. See links in the description. The figures indicate intervals from the bass voice to various upper parts. We then expanded on the rules for four-part writing, pertaining to doubling, common, nearest tones, contrary motion between four and five, also range and voice crossing errors. Cadence comes from a Latin verb meaning to fall, and we learned about two types of cadences, authentic and plagal. We also had an assignment to transpose both types of cadences to several major keys. This was our basic workflow for working out and transposing four-part writing exercises. Following the rules is mandatory for the exercises. We spoke about chord function and introduced the secondary triads in major keys, the two, three, six, and seven chords. All are consonant minor chords except the triad on the seventh scale degree. The seven chord is a diminished triad and therefore dissonant, a dependent chord requiring resolution. All seven scale triads function in relation to a central or tonic key. In a different key, 
the same identical triad will function differently. Voice leading rules apply when linking up triads a third or sixth apart. Two common tones function as pivots, with the remaining voice moving by step to the nearest chord tone. Note. When the leading tone triad resolves directly to the tonic triad, the leading tone, its root, may not be doubled. Triads a fourth or fifth apart have one tone in common. The voice retaining this tone serves as a pivot for the remaining parts, which move to the nearest chord tones. Observe the use of contrary motion to prevent outer voices from ascending together into a hidden octave. and we should not permit both soprano and bass to leap or skip at the same time, except within the same chord. We memorized the names of the seven scale triads in the major mode. Tonic, supertonic, mediant, subdominant, dominant, submediant, leading tone. The root of each of these triads is one scale degree from its neighbor. To properly connect a pair of triads that are one scale degree apart, the upper voices must move in contrary motion to the bass, to avoid parallel fifths and octaves. We may have to double the third of one of them, except never double the third of five, which is the leading tone. For practice, we transcribed and transposed previous exercises to the seven sharp and seven flat keys, then practiced playing them on the piano in the new keys. We worked through a demonstration about how to analyze voice leading and harmony in written music. First, label the key, indicate scale degrees of chord roots with Roman numerals, note any unusual voice leading, such as a double leading tone whenever the seven chord is not followed by a one chord, Mention voice motion and any common tones used as pivots. Wax on, wax off, Daniel's on. Hidden octaves involving inner voices are acceptable. Downward movement from perfect fifth to diminished fifth is acceptable, but upward motion from diminished fifth to perfect fifth involves a forbidden hidden fifth. Mention any doubling of thirds and or contrary motion. Also, any omission of chord fifths or arpeggiation, when permitted, and label all cadences. A bass sequence is a repetitive pattern of intervals of the bass line and allows for certain exceptions, such as a double leading tone in the sequence. Still have to watch out for hidden octaves between outer voices and any voice range violations. Neither is permitted, but transference of a common tone to another voice often is, that is, in a sequence. We were warned that mindless overuse of sequences may short-circuit one's creativity. Very good. There is the review, that is, of the major points explained in the first part of the series. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, share a link, and post a comment or question. Thank you for watching and listening.